Every day our lives are touched by engineering, from smartphones and alternative energy to medicine and technology. The field of engineering is at the core of these great advances and will be the key to solving real world challenges. Welcome to Pathways, I'm Dr. Kate Hetherington. This show takes a closer look at how Howard Community College is educating the next generation of engineers and training the future workforce. The engineering program at Howard Community College offers students the opportunity to major in a wide variety of disciplines, such as electrical, mechanical, and computer engineering. Let's join the Acting Dean of Science and Technology, Patty Turner, and find out more. What is uniquely different about our program here is that the students have access to faculty that are engaged and enthusiastic and creative about their teaching. They have um, small classes. Um, they have the opportunity to um, become involved in a range of extracurricular activities, such as becoming a member of the Society for Women Engineers or the National Association of Black Engineers. They do service learning projects. So, um, for example, this semester the students are working with a local organization, volunteer organization called VLink, where the students actually meet with clients in the community that have certain physical challenges and come up with creative engineering designs to help them solve that particular problem. The engineering curriculum um, allows students in virtually any engineering pathway to get all the courses that they need to transfer to a four-year college or university with junior status, whether it's civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, biological engineering. Um, so students have lots of opportunities here and lots of choices. Here to tell us more about their experiences are two of our engineering alumni, Chris Gunther, who transferred to UMBC, and Kyle McDaniel, who transferred to the University of Maryland College Park. Welcome, Chris and Kyle. Hi. Hi. Nice Hi. Thank you. Great to have you here today. Chris, I'm going to start with you. I know engineering is a second career for you. So what drew you not only to engineering, but also what drew you to Howard Community College? I've always worked with my hands, working on old cars or fixing things around the house. And I kind of wanted to formalize that training. And I grew up here in Columbia, so um, Howard Community College was very close and had a good reputation. Um, and you know, my wife and I, since I was leaving the workforce, we had to work on one salary instead of two. So you know, the economics worked as well. Mm -hmm. Were you in an engineering related field before going into engineering here at HCC? So I worked at a, another university doing um, scheduling construction projects for, for on-campus housing. And Kyle, you came straight from high school. Did you already know you wanted to study engineering when you um, were thinking about coming to Howard Community College? Actually, yeah. Um, I figured out I wanted to do engineering when I was uh, in, a freshman in high school and I thought going to Howard Community College would be a good transition before going to a four year university. Both of you, um, our STEM scholars and our STEM learning community, proved beneficial to your success. Can you tell me more, Chris? How about if you start? Um, yeah, the, the, the one credit STEM seminar classes were great to meet uh, other students in my major, taking the same courses. Um, it helped me form study groups uh, to, to kind of work through the hard material. And Kyle, your experience at HCC connected you to an internship that led to co-authoring a research paper. So how did that all happen? Well, it was actually under the recommendation of my engineering professor here at HCC. He uh, got in touch with a professor at College Park who was looking for undergraduate interns, and um, he recommended me. And uh, I'm still working with him now at College Park, and um, it's been working out really well. Wonderful. So you you actually have your name on the paper, right? I do. Yeah. Well, that's it's impressive. Very exciting. Wonderful thing to have on your resume too. Absolutely. Yeah. And Chris, as a returning adult, um, returning adult student, I should mm -hmm. say, I imagine using the services um, at HCC helped you prepare for transfer. Can you explain about that? I use the tutoring center for um, most of the classes that I took here. I also uh, participated in the step up. Uh, mentoring program, so I had a great mentor for the last year. The faculty were really great in um, helping uh, 
during office hours and outside of office hours to work through the content. And were you able to use the transfer center to know what you had to take uh, here at HCC and transfer to uh, UMBC? The advisors at the transfer center were great. Um, I used the ARTSIS a lot to you know, make sure everything lined up. A final question for both of you. Um, what are your future plans? Kyle, how about if you start? Um, well, after obtaining my bachelor's in mechanical engineering, uh, I'd like to go to grad school, but um, I'd like to focus towards um, learning more about renewable energy systems um, and try to work for either the government or just a private company that designs more efficient renewable energy systems. Okay, wonderful. Chris? Um, well, I graduate this May and I'm... Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm looking at uh, graduate school at UMBC and job searching. Well, Chris and Kyle, thank you so much for joining us today. And we're so proud that you're alumni of Howard Community College and soon to be graduates of UMBC and University of Maryland College Park. Congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Oh, thank, you. thank you. To succeed as an engineer, you must learn to work in teams. That's why the HCC Engineering Program encourages students to work collaboratively to design, build, and test their own projects inside and outside of class. How do these projects develop? Through student and faculty ideas or event partnerships. A new partnership with the nonprofit V-Link came together at a bike clinic. V-Link was hosting a bike clinic, um, and so we went out as volunteers. Um, great opportunity. We got to work with the students, or children, I guess, really, of all ages, from 5 to 10 to 12, and build bikes for them. There is a Nesby group at the professional level that exists in the Baltimore, Washington area, and one of their um, officers put us in touch with them because they sort of unofficially mentor our HCC Nesby group, the National Society of Black Engineers. And so they connected them with V-Link for a bike clinic that was run uh, at Morgan State University. And then from that interaction, our students met with more of the V-Link volunteers who then asked if the students here would be interested in getting more involved with V-Link and some of their assistive device projects. V-Link makes custom assistive technology available to individuals with disabilities. Students are working on two projects, a device that will help an autistic young woman get dressed and a device that will allow an artist with a spinal cord injury to better use his easel. Let's take a look at how work is progressing on the easel. For artist Rob Florio, having an easel he can adjust on his own is essential to his work. I had a teacher, his name was Alex Chambers, and he gave me my first mouth stick and a watercolor set. And I took it home and I was like drawing this bonsai tree I had in my room. And I drew it and it looked exactly like the bonsai tree and I painted it in and when I showed it to him, it was like, wow, you're really good. So if I'm not feeling good and like I can't get out of bed for a while, I can paint there. Because sometimes my neck hurts and I don't get out of bed, you know, at all. So if they're gonna be placing this uh, uh, in relation to his body on a bed, it presents a different kind of challenge. Like if he's gonna be reclined, will this linear actuator piece that sticks out at the bottom, you know, be a safety concern. And because it's so heavy, if he's in his wheelchair, he can easily back away, but if he's in his bed, it makes it difficult to sort of get out of the way of something that might be falling down. Safety, I think, is one of the biggest concerns for that project. Um, and just making sure that whatever they build is compatible with this easel that's already been made and already comes with its own set of challenges, perhaps, and, and benefits to Rob. It's fun meeting the students because they're like kind of like bright-eyed, and they're all like, when they meet you at first, they're like, what is this? What's going on? And you can see it on their faces. And I, I remember when I was, I remember when I was in college. I mean, I'm only 33, but it's just funny to see then and now. Like, you know, um, most of them are pretty. Like the students working on it now are, are very smart. They all have a lot of good, good ideas, and it's good to see that they work together on projects. Working on the easel will provide students with skills they can one day use on the job. And then just the idea that then they get to interface with this interdisciplinary team at V-Link and present designs and then be accountable to not just V-Link but also the client. And again, these experiences are very authentic. When they go out and work on an engineering team, they're going to have to speak to a boss about their design and justify it and defend it and say that, well, we looked at all these different possibilities, so we're not just picking something out of the air. We've weighed and measured 
benefits, disadvantages, and, and I think they get all of that through this project. They get exposure to professionals, volunteers, clients, and then have to actually produce a product after a set amount of time. We look forward to seeing the final solution. Up next, we'll take a look at other projects inside the HCC Engineering Lab. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Let's join the Chair of Engineering and Technology, Mark Edelin, on a tour of the Engineering Lab. Hello, my name is Mark Edelin. I'm the Chair of Engineering and Technology. In the display case behind me, you can see some of the projects that students have worked on. 3D printing technology has actually really changed the way that we teach engineering here at HCC. Students working on these open-ended projects can conceive of a part or a design and actually generate that part in the same day. In the past, that process could have taken multiple days or even weeks. So let's move into the lab and see what students and faculty are working on today. We're here in the engineering lab where students have uh, several engineering classes. They also use this as a computer lab and a study hall, a place to work on projects. Let's catch up with Associate Professor Scott Forrester. Hi, Scott. Hi. Scott, can you describe the Introduction to Engineering course and how it's unique um, from how other colleges offer that course? We try to, um, every semester, build on the previous team's work. So the goal is to replicate the previous team's failures and successes and then push the project forward. That's called an open-ended project. So we've got projects going on right now in this room that are very old and projects that are very new. Our engineering students work on a variety of projects starting in the Introduction to Engineering course. Let's check in with this group working on a project now. Will, can you describe this project to us? I think it's called Blood Cooler. Yeah, we're working on the Blood Cooler project for this semester. Um, this has been an on-again, off-again project for HCC for about three years now. Um, basically what we're doing is uh, using the principles of thermodynamics and uh, the science of heat transfer amongst mammals to find a more efficient way to cool the body down. Thanks, Will. We're here with another group of freshman engineering students. This project involves designing a unique robotic manipulator arm. Can you describe uh, what this project is about? The idea of the bionic tripod manipulator, and it focuses on a, bi a robotic arm that picks up a certain object and places it in another position. Can you describe some of the some of the hardware and how this fits into the project? Uh, this object right here is the end effector. It is the hand of the bionic tripod manipulator. Essentially, it picks up the object and drops it in the specific position. And the the PLA wires move the hand to the specific position, pick up the object, and move it to the position. Um, the motors are what control the wires, the PLA wires. They are the movement of the bionic tripod manipulator. The handle, this was the original handle that was used for this specific uh, project, but the weight was too much for the motors to control. So instead we used this handle that was orchestrated on Inventor and replace this handle. Thanks, Calvin. Can you describe, uh, has this project changed your perception of engineering at all? It made us realize as beginning engineers of different ways, different solutions. Thank you, Calvin. Shivam, can you describe uh, specifically what role you have played on this project? My task was to build um, the design of the hand that moves around and trying to reach one side to the other side. And first thing was I tried to come up with the different wires and the best wire was I was able to use was the PLA wire that I found in engineering room. And uh, first I used a uh, uh, gear assembly and made a holes and trying to use those to kind of hold my hands and it didn't work so I had to use a Lego part and it seems to be working so far right now. 
Thank you. Let's move into the workshop area to find out what students are working on in there. We're here in the engineering workshop when, with a group of students working on a project. This project is called Spy TV. Ryan, can you talk to me for a second? Yes, sir. Can you tell me why this project is called Spy TV? The TV frame right here that would be locating people as they walk past, and the TV will start moving towards them, following them as they walk past. Can you show me kind of what that will look like here? Sure. I got the actuator right here that will be able to push the TV towards the person. As they move past it, it will move towards the person. Then as they start walking, it will start to follow them as the actuator pushes downwards. OK, thanks, Ryan. On. Hey, can you tell us how this project fits into the new science engineering technology building that's under construction on campus? So when the new building is constructed, um, we're going to have it implemented in a kind of a presentation. So we're, I devised a couple of different places for it to be placed, either at this vestibule over here, people are going to enter, people are going to see a spy TV coming towards them, it'll be a marvel, or we could put it in the engineering big build room, um, what, we, what we want over here, the goal is to have it into a Rube Goldberg type of thing. Thanks, On. Yep. Let's talk to Chandler, the last member of this group. Chandler, uh, can you describe uh, what role you've played on this project so far? I've been working with the IR sensors. Uh, this is to detect the people, so when they walk past the sensor, the actuator will move the TV. Can you kind of show us how this works, this sensor? Whenever a object moves in front of it, I've rigged it so that it will light up two little LEDs. Um, these LEDs will be re replaced with the uh, actuators in the full project. Okay, thanks a lot. Good work, guys. So as you can see, HCC engineering students are working on a variety of interesting projects. We try to focus on these open-ended projects to give students authentic experiences of engineering from their first semester here. While the engineering lab at HCC offers students hands-on experience, it's a far cry from what the future holds. Construction is underway on a brand new science, engineering, and technology building. I was joined by trustees, elected officials, faculty, staff, and students at the groundbreaking last fall. This four-story facility will educate the next generation of biologists, engineers, and cyber technicians. They will help meet the county and the state's workforce demands. On every floor, you will find spaces that invite students to connect and collaborate, to study, and to make new discoveries. The Fab Lab will provide students access to new design and fabrication technologies. A cyber lab will train students who will protect us online. An undergraduate research lab and drop zone will allow students to test physics and science experiments. On the top level, you'll even find a greenhouse and a rooftop observatory. The students are so excited about the new building that they built a scale model during National Engineering Week. Project Supervisor, HCC Civil Engineering student, Olivia Persing, led the student project team. The hard part we have found so far is that there's really weird corners, and so it's kind of hard to be able to do that because connects are very, like, the same exact corners for every piece. And then also, it's just, since it's so big, we don't know if we're going to have enough pieces. <laughs> It's cool to like have a bunch of kids come together and work on something. And since we didn't have it all like perfectly planned out, it's really cool to, you know, be able to problem solve on the spot and say, "Oh, you know, this isn't working. Let's figure something new out." I really enjoyed that part. The new science, engineering, and technology building will open by summer 2017. Up next, hands-on science and engineering doesn't just happen with college students. We'll talk about our Kids on Campus program that brings science, engineering, arts, and the humanities to life each summer. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. If engineering isn't a match for you, consider another hands-on career, dental hygiene. New to Howard Community College in 2014, dental hygiene is a fast-growing profession within the healthcare field. The path to becoming a dental hygienist is a rigorous one. Through classroom instruction and hands-on experience, the program is designed to prepare students for the licensure exam. 
Here at HTC, we are different from other community colleges because we are a very small program. We accept 16 students. There's a lot of in individualized one-on-one -on -one attention. The students in the simulation lab constantly have a instructor right over their shoulder, and our ratios are very small. The teachers are very hands-on. They do everything they possibly can to make sure that you are successful in the program. Um, it's great. Students in the classroom receive an excellent education. A lot of didactic information as far as lecture, the students learn the uh, reason, the rationale behind a certain theory, and then we go ahead and move on into a lab setting or a clinical setting. And that's where they take what they've learned didactically and apply it to real life situations. It's been tough just um, making an adaptation to uh, getting all the work done, um, but it's what I love to do and I realized in this program even more that it's what I wanted to do. It's a very diverse group and um, I feel like our instructors make it a lot of fun. They're very motivating and caring. By starting out in a simulation lab, students are prepared to handle real life situations. We have a simulation unit so they start out small, they work on the simulation mannequins and then once they show competency from that, then they move on to a student partnership, work with a student partner, show competency in that area, and then move on to live patient volunteers from the community. And that's really later on, third, fourth semester. And they really use those dental hygiene skills learned early on and apply all of their knowledge. Currently, they are seeing their friends and family. They also are seeing faculty, staff, and students here at HCC. Starting in the fall, we will be opening our doors to all the community members. These offices will be open on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The volunteer patients have been impressed. All of my patient volunteers tell me how great they are. They just love coming here and seeing how, you know, nice everything is and a lot of them never have had a digital x-ray done so they really thought that was neat being able to see them on the computer screen so it's been pretty awesome. We help them to master their skills as a dental hygienist. We do a lot of focus on professionalism. We expect our students to follow a strict professional uh, code of conduct. To find out more about the program visit the college's website. If your child loves hands-on learning but isn't yet ready for a career, Howard Community College has the answer with its Kids on Campus. More than a summer camp, Kids on Campus offers enrichment classes that let kids explore, learn, and have fun all summer long. Here to tell more about the program is Sarah Baum, coordinator of Lifelong Learning, and Connie Stern, a parent. Thanks for being here today. Sure. Uh, Sarah, we'll begin with you. How has Kids on Campus evolved since starting 29 years ago? Well, we started with four classes, about 40 kids. We're at 259 classes and about 16 to 1800 kids over the summer. So it's uh, grown rapidly. It's impressive growth. Thanks. <laughs> what elementary, middle, and high school STEM courses will be offered this summer? Probably the most popular one in both the elementary and middle school area is Minecraft. Minecraft is it's technology, it's fantasy, it's um, hands-on application. We, and we've already filled the classes we had originally and added more. For uh, other elementary courses, we have uh, elementary engineering, we have gadgets and gizmos. They have a new course called Radios and Resistors about building circuit boards. Um, we have engineering design. They do a, they create a Rube Goldberg um, game. Certainly an impressive array of classes and uh, you make them sound fun and I'm sure they will be for the kids. That's what we always hope. Right. Now Connie, how does Kids on Campus meet your expectation of an academic summer camp experience? When we first started um, looking for camps, we were not looking for an academic camp, but we were looking for an alternative to a sports camp. Um, we came across some of the materials from Kids on Campus and were really intrigued by the variety of courses that were offered and um, the enrichment that could, could take place. And my daughter just really got into the wide variety of um, experiences that she could have over the summer. Now, uh, Kids on Campus is a day camp. It's not an overnight camp. 
What practices do you have in place to help parents who may be working but still want their kids to have a summer camp experience? We really try to be um, mindful and accommodating. We have before care, which is prior to the camp starting. We have after care, um, which lengthens the day and, uh, and gives parents the ability to come later after work. And then we bridge the two with uh, a lunch, a supervised lunch. So they could be here as early as 7.30 all the way to 6.30. Oh, so that's a, a full day a and full great day. for not only the kids to have the experience, but also for working parents. Yes. Just perfect. Great. Good. Connie, um, you, your daughter had such a great experience here, but what initially drew you to the kids on campus? You were saying you wanted uh, something other than an athletic camp experience for your daughter. We wanted her to have fun in the summer. Um, and she does like an indoor setting with air conditioning. Um, <laughs> so that was always helpful. Um, but she, she found so many different courses that she wanted to take. And as both of my, my husband and I both work full time. And so the, the um, options that Sarah mentioned were really perfect for us because we could do either before care or after care, both if we needed to and having the lunch in between. Um, it was really perfect. And the options of being able to choose the weeks that you want to come was helpful. We would often wait for the schedule of kids on campus courses to come out before we picked our vacation weeks so that she could pick the classes that she wanted to be involved with. So um, everything from cake decorating, which is still one of her favorite hobbies, through um, fitness classes and science classes and business beginnings, she has enjoyed every one of them and has made friends along the way in every class. Well, we're glad that she'll be working with the program this summer. Uh, she's Very probably much. there. Our poster child, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. She's a legend. <laughs> she is a legend, yes. Well, thank you both for being here today and for telling the experience. And Sarah, thank you for all the good work that you do for kids on campus and all the children's lives you have affected over the years. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. For more information on kids on campus, call 443-518-4110 or visit the website. That wraps up this edition of Pathways. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.